Elisha and Naaman the Soldier, a true story from 2 Kings chapter 5. Our verse for this lesson is 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 5. Be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. God wants me to be humble. God wants me to be humble. In the days of Elisha the prophet, Israel's enemy, the Syrians of Damascus, they had a captain of their army. He was named Naaman. He was a great man, and he was honorable, and God had allowed him to have many victories um, over Syria's enemies. But, as you can see by the white spots on his face, he was a leper. Now, leprosy was this terrible skin disease. And Naaman had leprosy. Well, it just so happened that as the Syrians went out by bands and uh, sometimes they would go out and attack Israel, make raids into the land, that they had captured uh, a little girl. And she was given to the household of Naaman to be their servant. Of course, she noticed that Naaman had leprosy. Well, one day as she was serving Naaman's wife, she said to Naaman's wife, oh, it's too bad that Naaman what not in Samaria. Because the prophet in Samaria, the prophet of God, I'm sure that he would heal Naaman. You see, this girl had heard of Elisha, the prophet of God. And she had heard of the wonderful things that God was doing through Elisha's life. So she was sure, and she's talking, and she told her, um, too bad. I'm sure Elisha would heal, heal soldier Naaman. Well, somebody went and told the king, Hey, king, there's this girl that we captured out of Israel, and this is what she said. Well, the king of, Assyri the king of Syria was pretty excited there in Damascus, and he was like, Wonderful! Look quick, let's send a letter to the king of Israel. So he sent Naaman and some servants and some soldiers with 10 talents of silver, 6,000 pieces of gold, 10, 10 new changes of clothes. And he sent them off to the king of Israel. And this is what the letter said to the king of Israel. I have sent Naaman, my servant, to you, that you can recover him of his leprosy. Oh boy. When they got to Samaria, and the king of Israel read the letter, he was angry. He tore his clothes. He said, what is this? Am I God? Can I kill and make alive? Hey, look at this. The king of Damascus sent to me to recover a man of his leprosy? Look, he's just, he just wants to pick a fight. He's looking for an excuse so he can come and fight against us. Ha! Huh. What, what is this? Heal, heal my, heal my soldier of leprosy. Huh? Well, when Elisha heard it, he sent a messenger to the king and said, King, why have you rent your clothes? Why did you tear your clothes in anger? Send him to me so that they may know that there is a prophet in Israel, that there is a prophet of God here, and God can work. So, Naaman and his crew, they went and stood at the door of Elisha's house. But Elisha did not come out to see him. Instead, he sent a messenger out. And this is what the message said. Elisha says, Go wash in the Jordan River seven times, and your skin 
will come again to you, and you will be clean. Whoa, Joy, what are you doing interrupting the story? Wait, you want to know if you have leprosy? Why do you want to know if you have leprosy, Joy? Oh, because you have spots all over you? No, silly giraffe. Spots, giraffes have spots. That doesn't mean that I have leprosy. Yes, yes, I know that Naaman had spots, but that totally different. Okay, Joy, he had he has leprosy, you don't. Okay, don't worry about it. Um, but while you're here, why don't you have your brother, Jerry Giraffe, tell us the point again of the lesson. Okay? God wants me to be humble. God wants me to be humble. Now, to wash in the Jordan River, we're going to find out, was humbling. The messenger had told Naaman that Elisha said, Go wash in the Jordan seven times and your skin will be clean. But Naaman was angry. What? He won't even come out and talk to me? What kind of prophet is he? I surely thought that he would come and strike his hand over me or call in the name of the Lord is God. Do some big miracle. But instead, he tells me to go wash in the Jordan River, that filthy, muddy river. Pah! Are not Arbana and Farpar rivers of Damascus? Those rivers are way cleaner than the Jordan River. Pfft, he wants me to go wash in the Jordan River. Bah, humbug. And Naaman left in a rage. Well, as they were going along, the servants of Naaman said to him, Um, sir, now, isn't it to something, a, a very simple thing that the prophet asked you to do? He asked you to do a very humble thing. Now, if he had come out and he had told you to do something great and powerful, something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? But instead of showing how powerful you are, how great and mighty you are, he asked you to humble yourself and go wash in the muddy Jordan. Well, Naaman thought about this for a while. All right, we're going to the Jordan, he said. So, they raced down to the Jordan. And Naaman went down into the Jordan River. And he went down into the water, and he washed. How many, how many times did he say I had to wash? Seven times, Naaman. Well, he went down to the river, and he dipped, and he dipped, and he dipped. Hmm. And it didn't seem to be working. Here he was in the muddy Jordan River that he didn't think was very clean. And five times, six times... And nothing's happening. But Naaman had humbled himself. And he had believed God. And God liked that humility. God liked that faith. And the seventh time, Naaman's skin turned into brand new skin. Just like if he was a little child. Where his skin was all fresh and new. He was so excited. Hey, guys, look! I'm healed! I'm healed! The guys on the shore were so excited. They also wondered how his hair could have stayed so dry after dipping in the river seven times. But anyways, so they all, they all went back to Elisha's house. And Naaman said, Now I know that there is no God in all of the earth, but in Israel. The God of Israel is the true God. And Naaman said, From here on out, I will only worship the Lord God. I will not worship false idols anymore, because I know that the Lord, He is God. God wants me to be humble. Be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. The end.